Today we are going to do momentum and collision. That is our eighth experiment. So all of you know about momentum, right? What is momentum? If I ask you, oh, some of you will say, yeah, momentum is calculated as um, product of mass and velocity, right? Yes, in fact, we calculated momentum as the product of mass and velocity. But momentum is the quantity of motion, right? Momentum is the quantity. How much is the motion possessed by a body? The quantity of motion is called momentum. Actually, uh, in physics, we learned a uh, lot of law of conservation. So, like law of conservation of energy. One among them is law of conservation of momentum. So today, we are going to discuss about law of conservation of momentum. And for that, we have today uh, an experimental setup. Here we have two masses uh, and we are going to, you know, uh, we are going to move them then definitely they will collide and we are going to evaluate their momentum uh, at a, each moment like uh, the momentum of the system before collision and after the collision these are the two instances we are going to study and this is the report we are going to use of course you know here you need to write the objective you understand that our experimental objective is to verify law of conservation of momentum and actually here we will look into the uh, kinetic energy and momentum of the system and yeah uh, this is the summary of the theory here you're supposed to write then there are a few questions you need to answer this is closely related to momentum then this is the uh, data table we are going to use you can see here I'm asking for uh, the initial and final velocities of these cards we have two cards they are going to collide that means while it moves of course when it moves it has a velocity in this direction the moment it collides it, this velocity is going to change that means we will have two velocities one is we call the initial velocity and one is we call the final velocity that means we are going to have two instants instant one is before the collision that is its initial velocity and after the collision that is its final velocity that means from this experimental setup we are going to take two velocities of cart one momentum we can calculate from that because we and we know the mass of these cards that we are going to fix certain masses over the top so we will understand how much is the mass or we can measure it right anyway right now from the mass and its velocity i can understand the momentum the same way cart two of course the influence of the cart one cart two's velocity is going to change so that we will have the momentum of cart two then we are going to uh, verify the law of conservation of momentum in fact, when two bodies collide, that means when two bodies collide, you know that the force exerted by this mass on this mass, that means the force on this due to this is exactly equal to force on this object due to this. So during a collision, we know that they exert a force. And in fact, these two forces are equal and opposite. Uh, I just opened the logarithm program and now we are going to do the experiment. Uh, in this experiment, actually, you understand that we need the uh, velocities of these objects uh, in two instants. One is before the collision and one right after the collision. So I'm going to have the, uh, I don't, I'm not using the position diagram, so I'm going to delete this. Uh, so I'm deleting the position diagram and this is the velocity diagram. And if you look here, I can, you can see here velocity 1 and velocity 2. That means here I have two sensors. This is motion detector 1, this is motion detector 2. And of course, if I move this, uh, you can see the... Uh, I, first thing you need to identify which is motion detector 2. So look at this. I'm just moving this. You can see that both of the uh, detectors detected these motions and you can see that the way it is a, a mirror, it's a reflection of this, right? So first thing what I'm going to do is, look here, here I have the uh, two cards, here I have the cards, 
and I am going to keep them in a certain way that it is going to collide elastically. Actually, it is a manipulation that we just uh, managed. Just to, here we are keeping two magnets. In fact, you know when 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 I move this, it collides this. But you know you can see that there is no direct contact because there's two magnets here. So that's the way it is going to work as a uh, elastic collision. And for this experiment, I have two masses. This is mass one. I'm going to keep mass one on my left side and mass two is on my right side. And I'm going to consider the motion in this direction is positive and the motion in this direction is negative. So if this object moves in this direction, this object is going to record it by the motion detector two. And this object is going to record by the motion detector one. And when this object moves, I'm going to show you one trial and it's a special trial and we are not doing this in the experiment. Here we have two masses. You look here, we have two masses, they are equal. If these two masses are equal and if I, if I run this, you can see that, you see, the velocity of the mass 1 is completely transferred to velocity of mass 2. That means, what did you notice? Why it hits? Complete velocity is transferred to this and this becomes thrust. That means its initial velocity, look it's once again, its initial velocity is 0. Cart 2 is initially at rest and cart 1 is going to collide and hit. What will happen? They exchange their velocity. It's a special case if these two masses are equal. You can see that and in the case of elastic collision, it is going to exchange their velocity. So it is an elastic collision, you see. And today we are only doing elastic collision in our experiment. Now. Uh, you can see here the velocity one I mean I can auto scale and you can see that the velocity one which is recorded by this red color that is the first object you see this is the first velocity recorded that means this is the one and this is a second cart that is recorded by this sensor but we have an option because actually both the carts moves in this direction so we have an option to change the direction of the cart two. I mean change the direction of the sensor two. How? I'll just show you, very simple. Go to this, you can see here there is an option to select the set of sensors. Here, this is a motion detector too. I'm going to reverse the direction. And look at this, if, the, if I just reverse the direction, and if I'm going to do the same experiment one more time, you can see, you look here, I'm going to start the program, just push, and immediately I get. And what did I see here? Look at the velocities of both cards. It's almost within the error limit. It is almost the same, right? And here, if I auto scale, you can see it in a better way, right? See, both the cards have almost uh, point 0.4 or uh, point. This is point 0.3, this is point 0.5. So it is almost, yeah. How, how can I read the velocity? Because in fact, I want the initial velocity of cart 1, V1 initial. This is V1 initial. And look in this picture. After the collision, the cart 1 becomes rust. So that means the V1 final of the cart 1 is 0. Is it? the red line you look at the red line at this moment the cart collide at this moment i impart some velocity and that velocity is this much how much it is you can read it from here or i will show you how to read it from the computer program too okay now what happens at this moment the cart is moving with a certain velocity that is v1 initial and it hits the cart 2 which was at rest you see the cart 2 which was at rest and immediately what happens it impart all its velocity to cart 2 right then it becomes rust it comes to rust so this is v1 initial this is v1 final now look here this blue line this is v2 initial right actually v2 initial was it was at rust so v2 initial is zero now look here after that what happens the moment it imparts its velocity to here right the after collision the, the velocity of uh, second card becomes this much almost the same as that right so we can say this is v2 final v2 final right so now uh, what is my plan actually this is just to demonstrate you in our experiment we have two parts in that we are using only two cases that is these two cases in which i'm using the first case in which m1 is this is m1 and this is m2 right m1 is greater than m2 we said m1 is greater than m1 is greater than m2 here all these two cards are 500 
grams. So that means 0 0.5 kilogram. So here I have another 500 grams. So that means if I add this on the top of cart one, it becomes one kilogram, right? Now a one kilogram object is going to hit a half kilogram object which is at rest. What will happen? You see, you notice that the velocities of cart one is reduced, but the cart two which was at rest moves with a little higher velocity than the cart one. You can see it once again. You look here. Yes. You see what did you what did what did you observe once again? When it hits, its velocity becomes a bigger value than this, and it slow down. So here, while this setup while this moves, this setups can provide us its initial velocity, its final velocity. Initial velocity means before collision. Final velocity means after collision. And this sensor can provide us its initial velocity. Actually, I kept it rest, so its initial velocity is zero. It can also give us its final velocity. So from this setup and from the known relation that M1, V1 initial plus M2, V2 initial is equal to M1, V1 final plus M2, V2 final. That means total moment of the system before collision is equal to total moment of the system after collision. Actually, today we have an elastic collision and of course you learned that in elastic in the case of elastic collision the kinetic energy of the system is also conserved the kinetic energy of the system i mean energy is always conserved but we are going to talk about the kinetic energy so the kinetic energy of the system in an elastic collision is also conserved so we are going to verify that so this is what we are going to do now just to watch how i am going to do the first trial so in the first trial i'm keeping m1 1 kilogram m2 half kilogram and I'm going to start to record data and oh, actually uh, I can start now just to put the collect button automatically the system is ready you see and I'm going to remove these uh, writings okay so that we will get a clean picture is it okay now look so I'm going to start my trial so just the setup is ready I'm going to start with the space bar so the machine is ready to take the velocity now Yes, I'm just starting, then I'm pushing this with a small velocity and immediately it is recorded. Actually, this is the graph now we get. Here, you can easily get the V1 initial. What is V1 initial? Yes, this red color. I'm going to select that red color. See, I just select this and there is an option here called the statistics of this curve. Here we have an option. Just you see, I select this small area, go to the statistics and here I know that it is uh, the velocity one so I'm going to click on velocity one and of course it displays the velocity what is the velocity the mean value 0 0.4296 is v1 initial 0 0.4296 0 0.4296 is v1 initial and I know m1 what is m1 it is one kilogram right so I have the velocity and the corresponding mass now look here what is this it is the same object so v m1 what is this velocity this velocity is after collision i'm going to get it from here so the velocities uh, of one right again i select that so i'm getting the velocity of that you see this is we call v1 the mean value of the velocity so this is v1 final v1 final how much it is 0 0.150 so i have m1 and it's v1 initial and v1 final see right now here you can see that the m2 in all our experiment we are keeping at rest so v2 initial is zero but v2 final i can select here and i can get it from here so i just to show the second cart latest velocity of cart 2 so here i have here I have the V2 final. What is V2 final? Yes, the mean V2 final is V2 final. Here, the mean value of the curve for 0. Point, V2 final is 0. 0.5202 meter per second. So I have V1, V2 initial, that is 0. Also, I have M2. M2 is half kilogram, 0. 0.5 kilogram. So we have enough information. Now we can just to prove the relation M1 V1 initial plus M2 V2 initial is equal to 
m1 v1 final plus m2 v2 final so we are going to verify this relation from this data so this is my first run and i'm going to show you uh, okay yes i got a very good i mean trial run you see and here you can you can see this is the v1 initial right v1 initial v1 initial just before collision is this i'm going to get the statistics of that so look at this v1 initial is uh, 0.4846 meter per second and v1 final i said v1 final is in the negative axis so that means you can see that yes so that means this velocity is whatever it is it is bounds like it's a negative value and uh, the magnitude of uh, v1 e v1 final is 0 0.1019 so i have two velocities v1 final actually m1 we understand that m1 is in this case 0.5 kilogram but v1 initial is 0 0.4846 uh, meter per second and v1 final is this is special case it's bounced back so the velocity is negative 0 0.1018 so now, now look at this our v2 v2 initial is zero but we know that m1 m2 is m2 is one kilogram and of course v2 final we will get from here what is v2 final yes i'm going to select this so i just to select this right i select the right after the motion and i'm going to have the statistics of the last latest velocity of v2 so this is my trial two here I had I have the final velocity v2 finally 0 0.246 now from these two trials from these two uh, trials we have all the enough information to complete our data analysis look into this you can see how you can see here I have two complete trials and I have the mass and initial velocity final velocity of cart one cart two mass its initial velocity and final velocity right now you we are asking you to complete the momentum of the system momentum of the system we have we are giving here two options one is moment of the system before collision and one is this for the moment of the system after collision you will definitely see that both the momentum will be the same and right now here finally here i am asking you to do the collision uh, i mean your 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 conclusion what happened is the result is i mean okay or not and final question this is an important point that you need to answer I'm asking you to only show one calculation and it is the case of m1 greater than m2 that means the second run here i'm asking uh, m1 greater than m2 is the first one right anyway here i'm asking you to do the calculation of kinetic energy what do you understand that the total kinetic energy of the system initial and the total kinetic energy of the system final are going to be equal so you need to separately calculate initial kinetic energy then you calculate the final and the kinetic energy and, and compare it so every enough information is ordered in the uh, report so please complete and submit your report thank you for watching